what's up youtube and facebook and instagram if you're on instagram you can join us over on uh youtube or facebook you can join in the chat um have some fun tonight we have a special guest joining us um james with uh fantasy football cockpit formerly or uh, formerly uh ff omaha captain but he recently changed that um He's actually not on here yet. We're oh, there he is. He just popped in. So um, how's that for timing? Yeah. Without further <laughs> ado, geez, we'll just throw him on screen really quick. What's up, man? <laughs> Yo, dude. Hey, how's it going? Nice to finally see you guys. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. Good timing. Me. I know. I was just uh, talking about you. I was just we just got started and was like, you know, we're having him on, and he's not on quite yet. And then boom, there you were. As right, well, just, uh, didn't recognize my uh, I had to do the setting to allow the audio and uh, visual video. Yeah, your uh, your microphone has a little static in it when you talk. Whatever you're using there, um, okay. So you may just may switch so that you know. Up. Don't screw up our stream, James. Jeez, <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> so, try not to. No pressure, man. Ones. <laughs> I'm just gonna try switching my AirPods. Yeah, no worries, man. No worries. Go for it. All right, we'll let him get that fixed really quick. See, that's what happens when you don't show up early and we can't test your equipment. I'm telling I you, know, man. man. I, know. I know. I we talk like we're pros or something. I mean, he know. already messed up because we can't call him Omaha anymore. Right, right. So. Okay, I think he's good to go. So we'll bring him <laughs> back on here. All right, let's see if that got fixed really. Better now. Oh, way better. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> cool. All right, AirPods awesome. for the win. Yeah, exactly. Except if for Corey's I'm AirPods, they get yeah, it's all the time. Well, my the the AirPod, the regular ones are good. The pros don't work well for me on my computer, so I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, anyways, nice to have you here, man. Uh, weird to see you actually in person. I mean, we communicate so much uh, online and everything, yeah. so it's weird to see you see what your face looks like and everything like that. What your voice sounds like. It's kind of cool. Well, it's well, funny if you had uh, saw me like a week and a half ago, I'd look different. <laughs> you know Did you me? get like a haircut or something? Yeah, I had like hair down to my shoulders before, and then uh, my sister got married, so I had to cut it all off, look presentable. But I had some pretty wild flow going, so uh, I would have looked <laughs> completely different. It could have been two different people. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I think I got the old Bluetooth lag going like Jason had when we had him on. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a lag on that, but that's funny. <laughs> you just you're not the first person to have issues on here, James. Uh I used to when I would do a screen share on here, my audio I would probably be a good thirty seconds off. My video and my audio was so far off. And we probably shot a I don't know, five to seven videos of doing that while the uh Yeah while our provider on here was working on trying to get that fixed, our streaming persons or her company or whatever was working to get that fixed. It was, it was pretty bad. Not very professional. Let me tell you. It was weird. Cause <laughs> I'd hear you and then you wouldn't be moving. And then all of a sudden it'd be like a, like one of those old dubbed over Japanese movies, but I'd brrr, like catch up really fast. It was weird. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> so James, uh, tell us a little bit about, um your page and uh yourself and just kind of introduce everything if you don't mind yeah no so uh i've probably been playing fantasy football since like i got out of high school like 10 years ago just with a lot of college buddies um yeah we all we're all pilots so i'm a pilot uh in my real job um the one that pays anyway <laughs> uh and so like yeah we just we've had a league with uh, it's really cool it's the league that uh i probably been the longest with we started making videos kind of uh, uh making fun of matchups between different guys in different weeks um oh dear my video cut out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we just make fun of each other's players and how everyone was doing and uh <laughs> even had some donkey punishments the first few years uh so then i got into more <laughs> leagues and more friends people from high school um yeah i don't know i just uh with covid and everything and not being able to see friends as much it's a good excuse to i don't know talk fantasy football with people uh, yeah, it's just something that's nice. It makes me happy. And uh, I have a lot of downtime at my job right now between flights. I'm a medevac pilot. So it's a lot of sit around and wait. And then when a call comes, we go. And then we're uh, going all day. And then uh, anytime we have downtime between flights, it's good to have. So yeah, I started the page hoping to get some pilot buddies into it. Uh, as you guys saw, I had a rebrand. So 
Yeah. Uh, first, it was uh, the Omaha FF captain, Omaha for uh, Peyton. Uh, as he's uh, he's my goat. Uh, I love it. Not my goat. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, guy's talented. Don't get me wrong. Guy's talented. But uh, yeah, no. So it was just something I wanted to start. I tried a few years ago, and then I got a serious flying job, which uh, required a lot of my spare time to be studying. Uh, so now I got a bit of downtime. It's nice to be able to throw some stuff out there and good excuse for buddies that I don't always reach out to too much to reach out and comment on stuff and uh, rouse me about it. So it's something I'm trying to start. I've been humming and hawing whether or not doing something similar to you guys, doing a podcast or a video. And it's just a matter of getting the time. My sister's wedding kind of took up a lot of time this past month. So freaking sisters. Now it's, yeah. Now that it's passed, I have a bit more time I can dedicate to fantasy football again. That's well, awesome. It was funny because I was I was bugging you a lot about a trade, and then finally yeah. you're like, "Bro, I got my sister's wedding. I need you to calm down." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably said a bit more polite than that. For those that don't know, yeah. um, I am Canadian, so uh, sorry. Yeah, and I I forgot about that <laughs> until I heard you say chicken. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was yeah. I was listening to your accent earlier on a couple of things, and I was going to ask about that because I thought you were. Um, yeah, but. Yeah. So where are you located right now? Are you in the uh, U.S.? So, uh, so right now I'm in uh, around Toronto. Okay. Uh, and then when I work, I'm up in uh, Manitoba. So I'll work uh, in Winnipeg and northern Manitoba up there closer to uh, like the Arctic or territories. So uh, right now I'm on my off week. So I'm in uh, Ontario for that. So I'm actually an hour ahead of you guys, but I'm usually on the same time zone uh, for uh, most okay. of the time when I'm in at work. Oh, we got you up past your bedtime. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's right. I'm staying up late anyway. Usually, yeah, it takes same. A bit to get off my sleep schedule, so yeah, I hear you, man. So I guess um, football, fantasy football, pretty popular up north there. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty popular. It's mainly because it's like one of the I'd say uh, fantasy hockey and fantasy football are probably the two biggest uh, hockey, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, fantasy ones. Baseball's not as hot. I you I think. This year and last year were the only two years I hadn't done it just because uh, COVID made it weird. And with such a short season, it, uh, I don't know, it was almost aggravating. Like we tried with it and too many guys were just frustrated with all the rescheduled games. It just ruined too many matchups. Yeah. So yeah, kind of put it off for now. Hockey was a bit better this year than last. Last year was painful. <laughs> uh, a lot of players <laughs> missing games really hurt weeks. Like you miss a whole week and if you have three players from the same team, it hurt. Yeah. Um, when you're missing you as know, many games as you are teeth, I mean, that makes a season really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, no, really. But no, football's pretty popular up here. Um, like cool. we have our CFL and like I like to watch it just as much, but we don't have that uh loyalty to players for each team. Like there's not that like franchise players. There's there's a few, but it's not as as big as down in the states. So like the football and the action's a lot. We like the NFL for that, and there's a lot of football fans. So yeah, no, it's it's definitely big up here. That's cool. So how did being so far uh north how did you become a fan of one of our southernmost teams down in Houston? <laughs> uh, yeah, Just no, poor taste um, or what? He yeah, into the warmth. <laughs> a little bit of dumb luck and a little bit of a uh, bias. Um, just being a farm kid, like I was, I'm always like kind of a country kid. So like one of my first video games on the PC, I think was like Madden 02. Yeah. Um, and so like the Texans were a brand new team. And like, uh, I was a Jones Drew fan. Like I just loved the guy. Uh, and so like, I played a lot of the Jags and like, uh, I don't know, just like for whatever reason, I dug like basically I was an AFC South fan. I just enjoyed watching the Colts. My cousins were big Colts fans. Um, one in particular big. So he's the reason I got on the Manning train pretty nice. early. But, uh, you yeah, know, then the Texans came out. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like it's a bull. And then, uh, I don't know, kind of dug the colors, dug the teams. Like, yeah, Houston, Texas, like I can kind of vibe with that. But then uh, Arian Foster was the first player I really, really vibed with just – being at Tennessee undrafted. Yes. Everything, yeah. just everything about the guy. I was so talented. I loved watching him. Uh, and then just watching the team around him, like yeah, Andre Johnson legend. Andre Johnson. I liked um, him yeah. a lot. Having, having JJ come in uh, and just watching what that defense came around him, like Brian Cushing, an absolute animal and a savage for anyone that's seen his face all bloodied up. And JJ did the same. They said, it seems like those guys, Houston guys don't like keeping their helmets on. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot uh, lately it's been hard. Uh, it's been a hard time being a Texans fan. It's, no doubt. Uh, we got a couple of friends up here that are, I guess, down here for you that uh, yeah. are all hardcore Texans fans that uh, they're yeah, struggling I, right now. They still crap on the, us because we're <laughs> Cowboys fans, but they're doing way worse right now. I gotta say. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's it's a tough time. I still remember um, a year ago the feelings I had when the Hopkins trade because there was rumors of a of a DJ trade, and I really liked David Johnson. I was fortunate enough. Uh, I drafted David Johnson when he was a rookie because I had uh, CJ 2K when he was in Arizona, so yeah. he was my handcuff for him. And as soon as he took the job, I was just all about it. He won. He was the reason I won my first championship. Um, so then I traded up the next year. I gave on a, in a redraft league, I gave away my third round pick just to move up from the seven to the two. Uh, just so it, was, it basically was the difference between LaShawn McCoy and his last uh, probably reasonable year where he was useful to getting uh, David Johnson again. And then I lost the final, so I didn't get to repeat. But uh, no, so the morning the DJ trade can do, I say Texans got like David Johnson. I was ecstatic. I'm like running around my uh, crew. <laughs> I, was, I was stoked. And I see Hawkins going the other way. And the, the feeling was incredible. <laughs> like, uh, it's been hard to even, like, when people bring it up, I just get really hot in the face. I just can't. Uh, oh, dev like, devastating. Just, I didn't like Bill O'Brien as a head coach. And then the second he started chasing our players out, it was devastating. Um, great quarterbacks coach. I thought he was great for Watson. Um, but, uh, yeah, just never seemed prepared to me. Just... I don't know. It's if games went to our game script, it was great. The second it, it wasn't going to script, we uh, we were sunk, and that's uh, like you kind of saw it when we blew it in that playoff game against the Chiefs. Um, Couldn't adjust on the, the fly. Had him by the throat and uh, took a foot off, so it it yeah. sucked. It really sucked because I don't know. And being a Leafs fan up here too, I'm used to it. <laughs> uh, guys, we lose every year in Game Seven. This year is no different. I'm, I, I wasn't even upset. I was just. Uh, I wasn't even angry. I was just like, yeah, like that's a, just another thing. I was already bracing for it. And, uh, that's like a lot like that's a Cowboys, Cowboys fan. fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's like, so much like, man, oh. just, you just expect to lose, you know? Yeah, no, it's like, oh, we're 8-8. Eight and eight. That's what we expected. Cool. Yeah, that's... it just, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me at that point. Um, but yeah, and then Watson, uh, now when, when he heard he wasn't going to play, I was like, holy shit, like we managed to chase somebody else out of town and yeah, there's so yeah. many expatriates now. Uh, in Houston, so I don't know how if I, I want to see how they do. I don't know if uh, I can be a Pats fan that way because I don't like the Pats. My brother in law is now he's a Pats fan, so that's yeah, it's not like worth that. going over to the dark side, man. Oh, it's not worth brutal. it. It's look, look so at the bright sad. side. The Texans are going to have a really good draft pick next year. This is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Somehow they'll figure and, out how to screw that up. Well, it's really funny. Like everyone's asking me, like, what are they going to do? Uh, in, in our um, big uh, charity uh, league that we have uh, the TCK guys are going to have me on there talking about the Texans. I know there's not too much that's like hardcore fantasy relevant, but I mean, there's some sneaky stuff in there. Uh, yeah. I kind of hope to share because uh, last year they were better than a, a four win team for sure. Kind of, they pulled like something out of the chargers playbook where you just, you know, <laughs> lose close games constantly. Yeah. Um, so I mean, even the first four weeks was hard You go against chiefs, Baltimore Steelers. It's like, Holy crap. Like anyone's uh, expected to go on three. Right. Uh, but I mean, the Chiefs, I know we've handled in the past and it was the first game. So that's tough. Uh, I think there is between the Steelers game and then the Minnesota Vikings next week, there's two late touchdowns waved off. That would have been like either overtime forcing or at least kept it close. And then they get waved off for oh, frustrating. <laughs> yeah. So frustrating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, finally, it's what it took to get rid of O'Brien. So I was happy for that. Um, but we were better than a four-win team last year. A lot of people forget how good David Johnson was just sneaky good. I think he was uh, still an RB. Was he the 10, RB10, I think, in PPR? I'm not sure. Something like that. 12. He, uh, he was close. Like, he was surprisingly good. He was higher than you'd think, for sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, he was like Corey lost connection there. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can find him. Yeah. Do you have him? You don't have him in Redux, do you? Uh, no. Who uh, has him? Actually, wait. Do I? I have him in one of my leagues. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't think it's... No, he's not He's not my Redux league because uh, I was just looking. Yeah. Oh, I have him in that first league we did. Hold on. I'll find it. Might be. Yeah, David Johnson. I got it here. Okay, so David Johnson last year was the RB... Okay, so he wasn't that good. He was RB19 in standard and RB21 in PPR. Um, and he did all that while missing uh, four games. Five could games. Have been a lot worse. He missed five games. So it could have been, he was still an RB2 despite missing five games. So, like, you kind of look like he, he wasn't as good as Nick Chubb, but I mean, he was actively sharing that backfield. 
in an offense where you have Watson's QB. So Watson's going to throw, but like people, like you look at his targets, like there was one game, he had 11 targets for 11 catches against Indianapolis for a hundred yards, 106 yards. And like, that's just awesome. Like just yeah. like, he's going to get regular thing for him. So there's some floor in PPR. He's valuable. Um, so like, I've been trying to buy him cheap in a lot of my leagues. Just like I ended up giving away like, uh, two thirds in uh, forum in one of my home leagues. Uh, it's a new dynasty league, but I'm competitive in that league, so I expect them to be really late for the next two years. So it wasn't too hard to give up. Um, just for a little extra uh, running back, say it's a starting running back. I got for two thirds. You know, you still got to have some veterans, and even dynasty, you can't be completely young. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's not a, there's not enough rookies and sophomores to go around for everybody. So if you're wanting to yeah. win this year, that's not a bad move for sure. Yeah, and I'm not this saying year, we're going to get four wins this year, but, I mean, the Texans, I think, are going to be a better team than people expect. I think everyone just sees the record from last year and forgets how close some games were, and they just, oh, no Watts, and they'll suck. Tyrod's serviceable enough. I'm happy we have Tyrod versus some Never other guys in the league floating around. For real. Um, so, like, he's he's fine. Like, he's taking teams to playoffs. I mean, Texans were relevant even before Watts, and, like, Hopkins made it work. Like, Cooks is undervalued. I really like the rookie Nico Collins. They could always bring back Matt Schaub. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he threw interceptions to the wrong team. Um, the good thing about Tyrod, though, is he kind of fits that same mold of a of a mobile court. You don't really have to change your offense from what you had with Watson. I mean, he's not quite as capable, but but it's the same kind of style of play, I would say. So um, you don't have to adjust your offense greatly, you know. So that's yeah. nice. Yeah, because Watson, like, a very capable runner. Like, when he ran, he was dangerous. Uh, but kind of like Mahomes like that, you don't think about his running game as the main thing. His arm is his first weapon. And for yeah. Watson, it's escaping is his second. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tyrod doesn't need to be mobile to fit that offense. And the old line is better. Um, there's decent weapons. Like, it's it's the offense will be better. We're going to be playing from behind a lot. The defense didn't really improve. So, uh, not going to have a lot of close games. But, I mean, it's – it's going to, I think the offense will do more for fantasy than people think. Yeah. That'd be nice. Hey, it doesn't, I don't care how they do in real life. I only care about how they do in fantasy. If I'm being honest, exactly. I, uh, I saw someone post about that yesterday with, uh, Oh, who was, maybe it was Jalen hurts or something. He's like, yeah, I don't care if he wins in real life, yeah. but if he's getting me 30 points every week in fantasy, he's my quarterback. I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. Yep. That's I'll take it. Um, true, true. Hey, look at that. Seven o'clock. Christopher Owen said, "Great point. They won't have to change the offense." I'm going to point out when I make a good point there. I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone agrees. Yeah, I'm going to pat myself on the back on that one. <laughs> Whether I'm right or not, I'll take it that somebody agrees with me. Um, I'm going to jump over here to the chat really quick because we got an early question here. Um, and so this is from Kevin D. He said, "Thoughts on Devonte Adams this year?" Uh, so actually, Trey, I I like. I'm Ooh, trying to get Devonte Adams. Oh. Uh, I really am. Uh, yes. I actually traded for him in our uh, Dynasty Redux League. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I'll just pull up what that trade actually was, unless you guys can pull it up on your page there, uh, so that other people can see it. Uh, let's see. Kyle, you looking for that real quick? Uh, yeah, I'm already on the chat. I'm just uh, scrolling up so I can see it. Yeah, the PC sleeper thing's really hard to use. I struggle with it too. Yeah. I think sleeper does really well on the uh the phone app. Oh, that's the, great for that. Using it on the on a computer, not not the greatest. Yeah. But what are I looking did see today well, they came out with their new functionality of being able to trade while on the draft board. Yeah. And that's oh, I'm feature. excited for that. Yeah, but while he's looking for it, Devontae Adams, I'm not worried about the dudes. I got the gonna be I got the chair. I see. Uh, it. Perfect. Here we go. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, so I gave up um, Allen Robinson and Javante Williams, which is really hard. I was, I'm a big Javante fan. Yep. Um, yeah. Actually, in my rookie draft I have later this year, he's the guy I, he's the running back I want, period. And I have the 101 in one of my other leagues um, based on losing in a, a loser's tournament, which was shocking to me. I was Oof. barely out of playoffs <laughs> and then my team just, laid an egg um in our bowl so i got a punishment coming for that and uh but no so javante williams is hard to give up he's the guy i want so so bad um he just does everything well the, i love watching his tape like don't get me wrong Najee's gonna be 
great. He's going to be great. But there's just something mm -hmm. about Javante. Just watching his tape, I just want it all. I, I just, I just want like last year. It was J.K. Dobbins for me. Um, so I'm a really high J.K. Dobbins guy. Um, I last year I was taking him uh, in some dynasty startups. My earliest was um, I think the one uh, the 208. Uh, in my other league, I took him at 304. Um, mm -hmm. So I was really high on him. So basically where people are kind of taking Najee this year, even Najee's yeah. going a little bit higher than that. Um, and so, yeah, no, uh, it was really hard to do that. And Allen Robinson, I really dig. Um, dude's oh, just super, he's I consistent. Like he's yeah. great. I was so happy that he left the Jags um, just because, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to bid them any well. But uh, no, like he's <laughs> he's just great. And like I'm really high on Justin Fields. So like to be able to like stack that sneakily would be pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, getting Devonte Adams, the dude was the one hundred and one, and he's going to stay that way. Rogers is going to play. Um, he's he's going to play. Watson will not see a game this year, and Aaron Rodgers will play all year long. There's no way he says no to the money. If anything, he's just going to do it, and he's just going to like make Jordan Love look stupid. Jordan Love won't play a snap. That's not happening no. this year. The dude didn't even dress last year. There's no way he starts. Like people are asking <laughs> that. If anything, Bortles has a better chance of playing than Jordan Love does. So uh, I like Devontae. Like, I trade from there. I also got uh, Damian Harris, uh, two seconds and a third. So it was great to add those picks. Um, so in this league, actually, if you pull up my team, I'm so actually so proud of this team. Um, you should be, actually. We've, we've see, talked about it multiple times on here about how it's actually annoyingly good. <laughs> and then at the same time, you have like every draft pick for the next three years or something like that on top yeah. of it. Like it's ridiculous. So, and I got another offer today for two more first next year. So as of right, it stands right now, I have four next year um, in the first round. And then I think I have two seconds and two thirds. So, but like looking at my teams, like, yeah, I got Zeke, Aaron Jones and Dobbins and my running backs, Devonta Adams and Michael Thomas. Uh, yeah. Bra I have Brady Burrow and uh, Mac Jones for my QBs. Um, I got Higby. Yeah, yeah. So you can and like look Burrow at my wide receivers. Uh, like, yeah, my running backs on my bench don't look great, but I mean, Dobbins is my third running back, so I feel good about there. Yeah, a lot of I'm rookies. Still bitter. Like... <laughs> I'm still bitter about the Hubbard situation. I just, <laughs> uh... I mean, I think I took I think I took Hubbard kind of late, and uh, being Canadian, I feel like I had to snag him on one of my drafts. That's a good point. Um, so I got him there. I really like my bench wide receivers, like behind Devonte. Uh, Adams there like and Mike guy. Thomas to have like Boyd and Higgins like Boyd to me is like a Michael Gallup type and so like, like if anyone guy. for whatever reason goes down he's going to step right into a very good role absolutely um and then Curtis Samuel I'm really high on uh I really think he's going to thrive there like how Logan Thomas caught a lot of passes last year I think was because they didn't have a wide receiver too it was McLaurin and him uh so Logan Thomas I want nothing to do with and uh Curtis Samuel I want everything I want it all and uh, yeah, Mims was a guy I liked last year as a rookie. Um, I'm just waiting to see if he gets a chance this year and wait all the jets. I'm waiting on what happens with, uh, uh, I guess, training camps coming up just to see what happens there. Uh, I think everyone's sides. waiting on someone on the jets to do something sometime. Yeah. Uh, and like, cause like, I like, it's like Mims's... that meme where they're poking him with a stick, do something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do something. Yeah, there's just so much there. They they basically have a crop to choose from, and it's almost like if they could pick any combination and no one could really be too upset with it, I think it's more we're just throwing darts at a wall and hoping one hits. Mm. But, no, I'm really happy with uh, my depth um, pretty much yeah. across the board. So it's tough. Like So one of the offers I got today uh, was from uh, D. Derry. Um, so he offered me uh, Justin uh, Simmons, the DB from Denver, Ronald Jones, and two firsts. Uh, but he wants Zeke in my third. Um, but basically, I'm throwing Simmons in the third out. And I'm just kind of looking at uh, Zeke with Rojo in two firsts. Um, and I don't hate the trade. Like, I think it's a pretty pretty fair trade. But the issue the issue for me just becomes, I already have four firsts. Like, do I need two more firsts? And are any, like, do, like, I like Zeke. I really like Zeke. This yeah. Um, like, I took him with the third overall we do pick in yeah. a startup <laughs> last year. Um, and like, I have them, I think in almost all of my dynasty leagues. And so it sucks because I'm like, Oh, I should go look for him and buy him low. And I go on to one league. I'm like, shit. I already have him. All right. Next league. I'll go, I'll go and get him cheap here. And I already have him. So shit. And, uh, yeah, it's funny. I have a few guys. I've done like that, that before. Actually. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like, so like one of my other leagues, um, it's actually funny. I have, I have the Aaron Jones, Zeke Dobbins uh, trio, I think in three of my dynasty leagues, five. <laughs> um, you it's unintentional. And then other leagues, it's uh, either one of Aaron Jones and Zeke with Dobbins. Um, it's just funny. Like even one of the ones I did this year, it matches both my teams from last year. I'm like, oh, that's interesting how that just happened again. Um, but no, Zeke, I like him a lot. Like people are fading him and I'm like, look, like, he's one of those guys that doesn't come around a lot. Like he has the talent where you, there's no reason to keep him off the field. If McCarthy wants yeah. to lose his job, you, you take him <laughs> off the field. Especially like, with how much they're paying that man. Well, it's just it. Yeah. You got to use them. And so I actually shared a post this week about running or last week, I guess about running back mileage. Um, and like Adrian Peterson was valuable up to like 2000 touches or just rushing attempts, just rushing attempts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like he went up to nearly 3000, but I mean, Adrian Peterson's a monster. Like no, like right. Legendary. But for guys that are fading Henry and Zeke um, just for all the, having high mileage, like, I don't know. Henry's only had 1100 rush attempts. Like, I don't know. That's pretty much like he's in the top five, but I mean, for he's the kind of guy he's talented. He's not coming off the field. And that's why you get up to that number. A lot of guys right. get 600 touches. Like look at David Johnson right now. Dude's got 600, I think, uh, or 700 rush attempts, but he's a big PPR guy, but now he's older. Um, but, and now he may not have the talent still there and trustworthiness to get past a thousand, but guys like Zeke guys like Camaro, Camaro will eventually get there. Cause I think, he, I think he's at 900 touches, maybe only 700 carries. Um, but you know, it's guys like that. I'm not scared. Like I'm trying to like push that. Like, Hey, he's at 1400 touches. You should like, he's, he's going to be done soon. Like give him to me. Um, yeah, like even guys like LaShawn McCoy were valuable into their 29th year. Dude was putting up a thousand yards, being a pro bowler, um, maybe not first team, but going to the pro bowl at 29. And it's like, these guys have at least three, four more seasons of that. And in dynasty, that's valuable. Like, yeah. You can get them cheaper and cheaper. So, I mean, if you can sell guys uh, for big money, a guy in my league just sold Derek Henry for two firsts and Terry McLaurin. So, I mean, I was like, holy shit, like that's a wicked that's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so that, but it's funny. Look at that guy's team now. He has CMC and Henry. Oh, uh, man. His wide receivers, it's like Mike Williams <laughs> and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and Ooh, someone ouch. else. So, like, it, it really takes a dive. But you have CMC who's carrying some of that load. And Derrick Henry is just going to be the safe. He's the safest running back you can pretty much no have. No doubt. Um, dude's just yeah. so big. He doesn't take big hits because – who wants to hit that guy as hard as they can? They they don't. Right. Well, yeah. and that's and they that's can't. one thing we've kind of that's one thing we've kind of talked about too with the age on and the workload on some of these guys that you know you see these these dynasty startups and everybody shies away from running backs that are like 27, 28, like oh they're getting older. Okay. Well, like Corey and Redux, he took Henry. Well, he's gonna get at least two more really good years out of him. Kelsey, even like same way, he's thirty-one. Oh my god! Well, he's got three or four really elite years left before he starts declining. Like, if you're trying to compete right away, there's no sense in fading these guys like that, even in hmm. dynasty. Well, geez, I got Henry at pick two nine. I got him oh. at the end of the second round. I mean, yeah. what? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's stupid. That's just, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's you awesome. faded too much. Because I was, I was trying to read an article for uh, like really good like RB ones that've been RB ones for years. Uh, I think they said like the drop off point was like eighteen hundred uh, rush attempts, and so it's like okay, so like Zeke might have two more years, but so it's two more years of what Zeke's doing in that offense. Like he is good. The offense is better. Mm -hmm. Dak will be healthy because you can't stack. It's gonna be impossible to stack the box. Like people are like, oh, he had so many rush attempts in the goal line. I'm like, yeah, because they had some nobody throwing the ball. So why would they not stack the ball, stack the box at the goal line? You know exactly where it's going. Well, so like oh, like plus we were three people deep. We were third offensive line deep. You know, yeah, with yeah. injuries. So yeah, but even like I mean, the, the offensive line, like just knowing you have a third stringer throwing the ball to your like to like Lamb and Cooper, it's like yeah, you have to be play honest. But I'd rather stack the box. Mm -hmm. Putting Dak in there, if you stack the box, like you're getting beat left, right, and center. You're, with yeah, Lamb, you're done. And Gallup, <laughs> Um, like those guys are just so good, and Dak is a top five. Whoops, drop it off. Is a top five QB. Um, there's no way. Like he's he's going to be. People are fading him because of his goal line percentage last year. How effective he was. I was like facing the stack yeah. box. Like anyone is going to do that. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, I, it's funny that people are fading them like that. And uh, yeah, it's hard because I've had a lot of trades come in for like guys like Dobbins and my team's been competing. And I'm like, man, like he's a really good flex for me. And like, if he takes off, he allows me to be competitive for years to come. So no, I, I agree when, when that's your third running back, I mean, you've done something right. Um, that's how I well, felt about is- Najee Harris on mine. I got him later than I should have. And I was like, that's my flex play now. Like yeah. that's, if that's what I'm looking at for my flex play, like possibly a future top running back for however many years, like I'll take that as my flex play. That's cause I'm trying to think of how late I got him. I think I got him. 310, I think. Cause I took, yeah, I took I think- at four one. Which was stupid yeah. also. <laughs> yeah, because that was between – yeah, I got him at 310, which is ridiculous because in some of our uh, drafts, he went, you know, like fourth overall or something like one of those. He went in that first round, and the another one, he went second round. He went at 310 here. And, yeah, I almost snagged Akers just because I knew Kyle wanted him, uh, and he picked right after me, but I decided to go with Najee just because why not have him on one of my teams? Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean – having Dobbins as your flex play is just yeah. ridiculous. I mean, that yeah. running back and that's where I'm, I'm looking kind of like you're talking about that uh, trade offer you got. And it's hard to give up that kind of depth for yeah. rookie picks that you don't know what they're yeah. going to be. I'm, I'm a pretty, that's why I had a hard time with Najee is I'm, I'm a pretty, uh, yeah. And one of them is Kyle's, so it's likely to be the 101 next year. So it's tempting. Oh, that's that's hard to pass on then. Yeah, if it's Kyle's, that's going to be an early draft pick. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, all right. Y'all just wait. But I I mean, Zeke's only like like 25. Dude, he's so young. Yeah, I was going to say, he's he's sneakily young still. Like, yeah, Najee's 23. He's he's been in the league ever, which he has, but he's only 25. Najee is only two years younger than Zeke. Yep. So for yeah. anyone going by age, it's like, well, he college hit, hits are harder. Period. College yeah. hits are way worse, and that's why everyone that was fading like um, Devonta Smith, they're like, oh, like he's gonna get crushed in the NFL. I'm like, no. Like, like there was a comparison I saw to like, uh, like to uh, like Ch- like to uh, Ocho Cinco, and I was just like, like not a huge guy. Uh, well, not really. A, well, he's still a big guy, like strong. And like he survived in a brutal era of the NFL where guys yes. are in the air and you're just getting clobbered. Su- like before, you yeah, before ball. they were protecting them so much. Yeah. I actually saw and, that today where Jerry Rice had commented on that. Like I could probably double my numbers in today's NFL since the oh, yeah. DBs practic DBs and linebackers practically can't do their job yeah. anymore. They have to let you catch it. Yeah, they have like, to be ball hawks. They have yeah. to be ball hawks or hard hitting guys that go after running backs when they come out wide. Like it's it's just funny how the game's yep. changed. Yeah, uh, he's a guy I really really like. Um, like him and Jamar Chase. Like there's only only uh, like six guys I want in this rookie draft uh, after the NFL draft. Like Bateman, I love. Amon Ross, St. Brown, I love. But I mean the the spots are fine. I'm just not as excited about them. So they're more. If I'm picking late first, like I'll re- I'll take them in the first round. But it's the kind of thing like I'm not trading up to get them. If they fall to me, I'm super happy. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, like outside of like you have the the three, like you have uh, Javante Williams, Najee, and ETN, Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, and Devonta Smith. They're the ones I want uh, more than mm-hmm. anything. I actually, I'm not a huge Waddle fan to be honest. He's, yeah. Uh, I'm actually he's kind of giving me some. Ru- he's giving me some rugs uh, vibes. I'm kind of scared of so. Um, like rugs is funny. I actually just saw the stat this week where he really struggled against press coverage and he saw it a lot last year and he really struggled. So I wonder, um, and that's something that, her, um, Devonta Smith doesn't like the guy saw more press coverage than anyone in college. And I mean, college guys are ruthless; they hit hard. So, I mean, I don't know if people try to deal like that, he's going to burn them. It's going to be awesome to watch. Uh, <laughs> I just don't like the offense he's in like Philly. Yeah. I don't like Jalen Hurts. Yeah. I don't, I want nothing to do with it. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have a job next year um yeah i i see him being kind of uh tim tebow-esque where really sucks in real life gets you fantasy points but kind of just a one year comes on and then he's kind of done kind of thing but i wanted him in fantasy fantasy. i I wanted tebow in fantasy i started tebow many a time in fantasy because he was putting up points i mean he was rushing the ball he was running for touchdowns i mean 
it, it is what it is. Some of these guys who don't throw as well, like Cam Newton or something like that, they make up for it with goal line carries and, and just carries in general. And that's kind of how Jalen Hurts is. I mean, he's, yeah, I think he's good and fancy, but in real life, he won't last long enough to, to matter. Yeah. I mean, you got to win football games to stay relevant at fantasy, right? So if they're not winning football games, they'll have to make a change somewhere. Um, and that's something I'm trying to actually like push on a lot of Lamar Jackson owners in my leagues, being like, "Hey, like, like the like he's in his fifth year. They haven't extended him yet. If they don't win this year, like, what can they do different with him? They might ship him out and hope for something better." I think um, the only the only I've been difference that is just to get him cheap. <laughs> I think the only difference is the. I don't, I'm not so sure that the Eagles are worried about winning. I mean, yeah. I, I don't see any evidence of that. So, well, I just don't see them, that they. It's a tough division. I don't. I mean, I haven't seen any evidence that they care about winning because they don't win a lot, right? So. <laughs> yeah, and that O line is bad. That O line yeah. is so bad. I wanted nothing to do with Miles Sanders. Kenny Gainwell is the only guy I want in hopes that he's relevant in two years. Like, he's the only one on that off uh, and Devonta Smith, yeah. obviously, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean the offensive line, same kind of point with Najee Harris, right? Like his offensive line is trash, but I mean, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Um, so if Miles Sanders gets those opportunities, problem is he has a rushing quarterback that is going to get a lot of those rushing opportunities too. Um, yeah. Cause if you have that offensive line, maybe you're doing some zone reads to, you got to put it in someone else's hands, you know, to read wherever your offensive line's screwing up right off the bat there. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm shying away from Miles Sanders too, mostly because he's just going to have to share a lot of carries. I don't have that same worry for someone like JK Dobbins with a rushing mm -hmm. quarterback because they rush so many times mm -hmm. in a game that it doesn't matter. And their offensive line is good enough to to open up yeah. opportunities for him. So I don't have that same worry with, with Dobbins. It's not a universal rule, right? Yeah. And I feel like too many people get caught up in universal rules of age of, um, of how many carries, like you said, their mileage and, and things of that sort. And people get caught up in like, Oh, he's this age. He's outgrowing, you know, his prime time, or he has this many carries. He's going to be done in in one to two years. And I think people get too caught up in those rules and don't look at the individual, you know, you got Derek Henry, who's not even a human and yeah. they're wanting to hold him to the same standard as someone else. You know, I mean, he's so, only really been the workhorse the last two, two and a half years. Yeah. About two years, a little over so two before years. Before that they were running a lot of, what was it? Uh, Dion Lewis, like Dion mm -hmm. Lewis was there and doing whatever the heck they were doing with him <laughs> there. And, Oh, and that's something I should put in my uh, post this week too. Um, everyone's saying like, oh, he had 300 carries two years in a row. No one's done it a third time. And I'm like, well, LaShawn McCoy got pretty close and he did it where his third year was with a brand new team. And it was mm -hmm. with the Bills like back in 2017 when they were still just not great. And so, I don't know, it was pre-Josh Allen. So it's kind of like, well, I don't know, McCoy being it, like he was good. And he had two very good seasons with the Eagles over 300 carries. One was so, not quite to Derrick Henry's nearly 400, but um, it's been done. And like McCoy's great. Like Henry, no one wants to hit him. He's not seeing the same big hits. He's going for big runs. So the touches aren't the same. He's not going right up the A gap and just beating his knees apart. So it's uh, yeah. He's a guy I'm trying to buy if I can cheap and yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that's only had I think Henry had it was like 180 carries that uh, couple like a few years ago, and then he went to 300, almost even, and then last year it's 378 or something like crazy. But <laughs> it's ridiculous. But it, but it's kind of a misconception. Like people are like always have 300 carries for years, and it's like no two. <laughs> but also everyone's like, oh, he's gonna wear. I don't want him in late in the season because he's gonna wear down, you know, from all these carries throughout the season. And he looks fresh as can be just at the end of the, the season. Dude rejuvenates. I mean, the snow like cools his feet are so hot. The feet cools right. him, the snow cools him down so he can run harder. <laughs> I, I've never heard that, but coming from a Canadian, you have to know about that science. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna you the, I'm just gonna let you science have that one. Yeah, <laughs> first, you got, got the cold science, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've got to do it. Uh, really good. <laughs> yeah, dudes dudes run snow tires all year round, so <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, snow well, tires are softer. You run one them time. in the winter in case you have snow. That's what snow tires are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it, was, it was funny. People in Texas uh, don't know apparently. We, they got chains. One, we got snow chains yeah. on our tires. 
Yeah. I think that one time during the draft, I was telling you it was your turn, and you're like, hold on, I'm changing the tires on my girl's car. And I was, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. It was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was such a pain. And then I ended up breaking one of the lug nuts off of my truck right after that, too, which was mm. great. Should have been paying attention to just one thing instead of both. Man, no joke. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, um, so let's see. We met – going to change gears here a little bit. What has it been, about two months now? That uh, yeah, we least. did that draft, that first draft. Yeah, that would Man. be the uh, yeah, it's one that Dom uh threw up. Yeah, uh, it yeah, the, just a it was nice the little... post 2021 NFL draft dynasty. He's got to change the name of that league. That is <laughs> that, the most name ridiculously so named bad. league I've ever seen. Um, and then we kind of like, hitched our that wagons was like together the day the after. Was that the night, the night, of, the, was that the night uh-huh. of the draft? It was like the morning. Second night. After. Second, it was. It was, it was not, second night. Oh, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we started early. Of day two. Yeah, it was the morning of day two of the draft. But because yeah, no one could hold their horses or something, yeah. that he just started early because we were all like uh, going crazy. People were like aggressive, like get on the clock, and it's like the <laughs> slow draft. Like relax. <laughs> they were just so pumped and ready to get going. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a good one though. But that was yeah, about what two months ago? Dang. Yeah, I was and, shocked. That was one of the first drafts where I'd seen that many trades. Like I've done de- leagues before, and like maybe there's like a couple trades, uh-huh. maybe. Uh, lo- a lot of my drafts, we'll see nothing. Guys just want to they'll just casually play with what they have in my home league. So uh, it's whatever. But it's just wild to see like in league like so like like you said with ruler just trading into a hole. Like <laughs> first couple of trades, you're like wow, like yeah, like well done, and then. And then you see you start getting nervous and go back and you're like, okay, okay. Like you just undid one and right. shit, did two. And, uh, I know. I, I, I even got a, uh, a trade at one point that just kind of undid. I, I mean, it was actually a bad deal. Like for her, like the deal was right, but yeah. in the long run of things in the big picture, it's like, you totally just undid <laughs> another deal you made and got less back out of it. I was like, man, that, you should not have done that <laughs> at all, yeah. but no. it is what it is. She was um, trying to do what you did in Redux, but then yeah. she went too far. She passed well, she that started, sweet she spot. She abandoned the one trip. She's like, oh, I don't want to be late. I want to be early again. And then right. it's like, oh, gosh. And, Pick the uh, strategy and stick to it. Yeah, when you trade yeah. back and then trade more to get back up, but later in the round, <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Like, are you able to pull up the actual uh, – draft board just to show everyone like how i had no i didn't really have much going on the first couple rounds everything i had was like four i think like three to six was where i like that actually i might be able to show that post 2021 one here i got Uh, it no no no, in the redux one just to show oh the redux we can show both yeah the redux is where i did most of my trading back so me me and Corey did the exact opposite uh strategy that you did and they both kind of worked, which we used as an example in some of our videos. It was like, if, if you kind of have a game plan, like you can make either strategy work, honestly. If you yeah. stick to it, yeah. Okay, so I did have a small trade here in this one, I remember. So I gave up um, my second, third, and fifth to go and get the 110 and the 2-1. Um, so that's where, so I started with Derrick Henry, uh, first pick, just get a really safe first round pick. And then I got AJ Brown and DeAndre Hopkins, two guys I absolutely love, even though I hate that AJ Brown's not on the Texans and he plays against this, but I love the guy. Absolute stud. Um, Hopkins, my boy, had to get him. So these two actually have in a couple leagues together as well. But then I didn't pick again. Uh, oh, I had the 210, and that's where I got Zeke. Uh, I think I uh, got that from you guys. I think you guys are pretty keen to grab some Zeke action there. And I managed to get them at 210. So I had four of my picks in the first two rounds, and then I didn't pick again um, well until like round eight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'd pick four early. So it's funny. I just did two completely yeah. different strategies with two different leagues, which I usually try to do just to try to mix up my rosters a bit. And that way uh, right. I'm guaranteed to do well in one, um, if not both. So, totally. Uh, so yeah, no, like big gap there. But I mean, I feel like I hit. I have two, like you start two running backs, I have two wide receivers. So I have some really good starters in there. I feel really good about. And then to be able to get like yeah. Tyler Lockett, that is a guy I have on one of my other teams 
Um, and it's just so funny. Like no one cares about him. And I'm like, this guy single handedly won me weeks last year. And people forget that. Like he, when he like, yeah, people like, Oh, he can disappear. And I'm like, yeah, but he's a, like, if he's your flex guy, they they'll disappear. They'll put up six points. The rest of my team is strong. If he goes off for like 41 points, like he did last year, he is single handedly <laughs> winning me that week. And that's what matters. Like you gotta win. You gotta play to win weeks you can't play to be okay and hope the other guy lo- loses the week for you you got to win weeks and lock is a guy that's going to win weeks for you and people forget that so you know i like this approach out. i like this approach because like like you said you got your four just studs here and then you were able to wait so you missed out some of it, but so you got four studs and then now your flex is looking at Thielen or locket mm-hmm. like what that's kind of sick or most are like, yeah, those are your flex options. Yeah. And then this is the league. I have David Johnson in as well. Yeah. Um, David Johnson, Michael Pittman, uh, even Marlon what? Mack. Like if something happens to JT, it's Marlon Mack show. Absolutely. So, so we know uh, what you're hoping very, for now. He, yeah. He's a very undervalued handcuff. Marlon Mack. People forget he was decent before JT and. Oh, uh, absolutely. People forget like, as far as handcuffs go, he's one of my favorite stone, um, like Pollard, Mac, uh, Madison. Those are like, Madison's those are like the valuable. big three. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then the guys that you just know, if they get that opportunity, they're going to go, they're just going to run away with it and they'll be fine. Um, Latavius mm-hmm. Murray, I actually dropped him in one of my dynasty leagues, but it's a league I'm really competitive in. And I'm really strong. And I felt really bad because it was either I drop him or someone like Elijah Mitchell, um, and I like Elijah Mitchell and I don't know what to do. He was a guy I just like pre-draft, pre-NFL draft. Um, so I want to give him a chance to maybe get into that San Francisco offense in two years because I'm just stacked for the next few years with players. So I don't need – if Latavius Murray somehow gets the starting job with that Saints offense, I'm not as confident in whichever quarterback just yet that I want him. But he's a very good handcuff for people. Latavius Murray – if you can roster him, feel good about it. Like I know the guy's 29, but he was good last year and they've said they want to mm-hmm. give him more touches. So totally. Um, yeah. Like it's, it's a very interesting team. Yeah. Most are love the guy. Like, like you said, he's going to win you weeks. Like he's not my RB. He's not going to be in my top two RBs. Like, but if he is your RB two, don't feel bad about it. Like he, he, like he's going to have big runs. He's a guy He's a big play waiting to happen. Yeah. If he's not scoring you eight, he's scoring you like 20. So feel good about that, especially if he's in your flex, you're laughing. Like, yeah, even if you don't like no running backs can play the whole season. People are people overvalue injuries so much like Henry does, but Henry's a monster. Um, not yeah. human. He's not human. Yeah. And so, so you think Mostert will, how long do you think he lasts? Um, I'm trying to offload him this season. If I got him, like, unless you're competing, if you're right in the championship, I'm holding him just because if he's playing, he's a big play waiting to happen. And yeah. But how long do you think he lasts during this, through this season? Like, do you think he's six games in on injured no. reserve or do you think he's, a- <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's going to have a big injury this year. I think he might have just like, so, like a little sprinkling, uh, salt bay of like little injuries. Um, but I mean, there's so many guys in that offense. Like, I don't even know if any, I honestly will think this is me. This is, this is like a hot take. This will be the healthiest season for San Francisco running backs because they have so many. I think they want to see what they have in sermon. I think they want to see what they have in Elijah Mitchell. I think they will be ahead in enough games. They'll give them time. So a lot of, I think this, the touches are gonna be really, really, really split. Um, and like Jarrett McKinnon leaving's great. Like this team through, I think they were a top five team as far as running back targets for, from the, from the QBs. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was just scattered. So, I mean, someone's going to hit, I mean, it's kind of like the jets, like get, grab a handful. They're going to get starts. Uh, but most it's the guy I feel best about just because I know what he can do. I know he can scamper for a 90 yard touchdown. And if that's, he only yeah. gets five touches, but he does that every game. One of five touches. I want him in my flex, and that's one hundred percent. I think I think San Francisco is one of those um, that you could start. I mean, you might have three running backs that are relevant every week in fantasy because they run the ball so well, and then all of those running backs are talented. Right. Yeah. So you could start any of those three, even if they are all 
you know, getting five to seven touches a piece, like you said, yeah. they all have a chance at scoring in those five to seven. And maybe they all three do score in those yeah. five to seven touches because they just run the ball so efficiently. So I feel well, like they have multiple fantasy relevant in flex spot. You don't probably want them as yeah. your RB two mm-hmm. even so, but if they're starting your flex, I mean, they're fantasy relevant. Yeah, no, you're definitely sweating them if they're in a more valuable running back spot, but at the same time, the big playability helps. It's just a matter of the nice thing, you know, with this team, the San Francisco 49ers is the hardest team for me to value players because they chance a smart guy and they don't really have outside of Kittle. There's no real stud prior to a Uke arriving last year that you can just rely on. Yep. Um, so Kittle's always going to be a factor when he's on the field, but everywhere else it's going to be game script. However, the game's going, that's who's getting the ball, but you know, the running backs are getting half the games because you don't want Garoppolo throwing the ball 30 times. And I don't think they're going to let Trey Lance throw the ball 30 times because he's barely, I don't know if he threw the ball 30 times in college. He barely played. <laughs> like I know he threw the ball 30 times. People that are listening, I'm not ridiculous, but <laughs> very, very raw, very raw guy. Yeah, and definitely. I don't see him starting right away. I don't think they want to give him the burrow type 40 attempts that he saw last year. Um, but Burrow could do that. I don't think Lance can. So know that these running backs, even a few of them could be on the field at the same time. Um, and yeah, I, so I trust the running backs a bit more than I trust the receivers. We're like, there's a couple like, uh, Jalen Hurd's an interesting guy. I know a lot of San Francisco fans like, um, Debo, I actually traded away last year. I traded, uh, uh, I think Debo for Chris Godwin, I think while he was injured. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was pretty sick. So I was pretty excited about that. Like Debo just came back, had a decent game, and like Godwin, I think he just went down, and the guy was, was that like person. Paranoid. Was he making a, a run at the ship or something, and needed uh, just someone just to play? No. While you're checking that, uh, Johnny asked, "You seeing any shares of Trey Lance?" I don't want any shares of Trey Lance. He's not my guy. Uh, I bought him. I, I bought him in what three leagues now? I think I, late. Yeah. I got him late, but why not? I mean, he's. I'm, 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 av- I'm avoiding him like the plague. Um, he's just. I. He's too, where he's being drafted. There's. I just. He doesn't have much tape. Like he didn't look great at. Like I don't know. He when he had some bad games and like like he only played once last year and he plays in a low division. He hasn't really seen enough college snaps to really i think get a feel for a lot and unfortunately i didn't like san francisco's spot for him just because i know shanahan's going to scheme a lot and he's a smart guy so i think trey lance will be good but i think he'll be good because of shanahan scheming guys open similar to garoppolo like garoppolo's not he's not a good qb he's trash yeah um I think where he was effective was Shanahan would scheme guys open and Garoppolo would be like, Oh, I'm supposed to throw here. Good. That guy's there. And he would execute it. <laughs> That's how we drew it up. Um, yeah. And, Good job, so I th- and so I think Lance, I'm hoping I want him to succeed. Don't get me wrong. Um, guys, super interesting, but to spend an early second, I would much rather have Justin Fields. I feel a lot better about what I'm getting just because I've seen him in big in big games. People's like, Oh, well he lost a big, like, he's lost games. I'm like, yeah, but then he comes back and like beats the shit out of you the next week. Like he's that kind of guy, like he's got that switch. And but some of that competition in the big 10 also is just, I don't know. I mean, and even though he showed out against uh, Clemson and even the commentators then were just like, well, he's playing above what he typically does. Like we've never seen him play this well. Cause they were talking, does this make his, uh, draft value go up and they're like mm, maybe not really because he's done it one time like that was a, yeah. a live conversation they were having of, and i don't know he's playing he's playing kind of out of his mind right now don't know if he can repeat it kind of thing and mm-hmm. um and i tend to kind of agree with that but again i'm kind of you know i've got that bias against ohio state quarterbacks in my head so it's one of those rules that i'm sticking with a little bit too hard probably uh, i do think josh fields will be successful um I think I just disagree uh, on Trey Lance. Uh, I'm I'm taking Trey Lance over Fields, um, just because I like I think I like his weapons more, and I think I like his smarts. When they talk about how smart he is, um, I like smart people. I think it makes up for athletic ability. I think uh, 
Peyton Manning is a I eat Peyton Manning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he's a I think he's a, a great example of that that his brain uh let him play at higher levels than his body would have. I mean, don't get me wrong, the guy was a physical specimen. Uh I've yeah. I I ran football drills with with Peyton at one point in my life. So, um love the guy, but um yeah, I mean, he just wasn't the physical specimen that a lot of these guys are. He didn't have the rushing ability or anything, but he's the the smartest quarterback I've ever seen play the game, and uh, it's just incredible. So if Trey Lance is as smart as they keep touting, you know, I know when uh, Shanahan went and they they said that, I'm sure you've heard this story, they went and watched Josh Fields work out and everything, and on the plane ride home, uh Oh, they, the GM saw he was writing up plays and everything. They asked him what he was doing. He was writing up plays for Trey Lance because he yeah. knew that Trey Lance was just going to be that good. And that's who he wanted. Um, well, but again, because he, he fits that, the scheme. He fits the scheme. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. I think I definitely don't, I didn't want to see Fields go to San Francisco because I think he's a better quarterback than what San Francisco needs. Um, just because I think like they can, they just need a guy to execute. And I really think, Fields is a guy that can elevate a team. Um, Trey Lance can hand the ball off to most certain Trey Sermon pretty good, right? Well, that's just it. But I mean, he and he's a dangerous guy. Like if he is anything similar to what Lamar Jackson's running ability is, he's going to be great. and He's going to be valuable, especially to Shanahan. He will be dangerous that way. Right. It's just a matter of because he's so raw. I don't know if he'll genuinely get the learning opportunities of throwing the ball and trying to read a defense because i don't know if he, that'll be his job to read a defense his job might be just a hey look for how a play develops and he's not really looking at what the defense is doing he's more seeing how his offense is progressing so i don't know what that means for his long-term value well um, if he's smart that could be a lot of uh pre-snap yeah. smart on where you're running the ball you know if he can yeah. see a defense read the defense and and determine what play you're running at and make those calls at the line i mean that's mm -hmm. an advantage there that Again, going back to Peyton, you know, if you can read stuff pre-snap and uh, run your offense that way, that's a huge advantage. And maybe they also see that in Lance and his smarts. Yeah. So that's, a, really, that's also He really needs to have a Justin Herbert type season. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people talk about what Justin Herbert did in the early parts. He would uh, he was running out of the pocket a lot. Like he'd 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 kind of watch play develop. He'd like look at his first like he'd like check down once. Uh, and then he'd run the second the pocket collapses and yeah. you kind of saw as he got more comfortable um, throughout the later season, he would stay in that pocket longer and he was starting to throw more paths. And that's where it really became dangerous. Um, like it was great to watch him run and know that he can do that because it wasn't expected, but knowing that he can be patient and he wants to go through those reads. I don't know if Trey Lance will do that because he has seen so few at college. Now I'm going to play devil's, like, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Um, Tom Brady, how many, how much action did he see in college actually at like at Michigan? Cause wasn't he actually the backup? Like, I feel like, I feel like, uh, this is just me going off. I'm, I'm no expert at this for sure. So, I mean, um, Brady also, he got, uh, he played, uh, one, so he played two seasons at least one season at 12 games, one of 11. And then he got two, six games in his first two years as a freshman and a sophomore. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. 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 So that's what he had. But, uh, but he also like, he won a ship. So <laughs> yeah, it says a lot, but, uh, but no, like Trey Lance is an interesting guy, but it's just matter, like with a, with a high second, like I would much rather take a Bateman. I would much rather have Sermon. I would much rather have Fields, um, Chuba, like, like I really, I Chuba's think anyone, an one too. I think a non quarterback there, uh, mm -hmm. honest. I mean, because, um, quarterbacks, people overvalue quarterbacks in fantasy, um, yeah. a lot because quarterbacks, I mean, you can, you can have a serve first serviceable quarterback. If you're just plug and playing every week. I mean, if you're yeah. playing matchups, you don't even necessarily have to have one. And even your studs can flop from here from time to time. So I don't know. Like super flex. He's still around a round one player. Obviously That's, you have to super flex is way different. You yeah. have to, um, but like Superflex makes you even feel Superflex. <laughs> Superflex, I think I'd 
like, I want to take the chance on him, but it feels so dirty for me. Yeah. I would much rather have Javante, <laughs> Jamar Chase. Dirty anyway. But, like, <laughs> after that first six, like I said earlier, we're, like, even, like, Waddle and Fading Bateman's, like, eh, like, that first six of, like, the three running backs hits and then going Devonta Smith and Jamar Chase, like, I'd be very happy if the quarterback, like, with that, that group there and then Fields and uh, Lawrence, him being – that in that group with them, that nine deserves to be that nine hands down yeah. super flex. But like Trey Lance, just, he, I don't know. He's like a mid to late second for me. Um, like if he fell me there and like my other wide receivers, I like, or if I'm just stacked a wide receiver, sure. I can afford to take the flyer. I will, but um, I don't know. In one QB leagues, like it's, it's not a valuable, I'd sooner watch him struggle this year and then try to trade for him. That's something I'm actually think I'll do with Zach Wilson. I expect yeah. Zach Wilson to struggle big because he's got three good defenses to play against. Second yeah, he does. Miami, the Bills, yeah. and the Patriots. Good luck. Yeah, no Jets. thanks. Um, I'm Jets buying Michael team. Carter on the cheap this year. I'm buying all – like, I'm not drafting him. I not for me, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm trying to get him for peanuts next year. Um, yeah, no doubt. Kinda, yeah, it's uh, that's yeah, smart. It's interesting. Well, like, okay, they're good, so they're talented. Mm-hmm. So Trevor Lawrence, you mentioned him. What do you think is going to happen with Trevor Lawrence? Like career-wise, you think it's going to be successful, or you think he was a good college quarterback and may just kind of be better than Blake Bortles. He'll be, he'll yeah. be better hit than Bortles um, was for that. Better so. than Minshew. <laughs> yes. No, I I think he'll be good. Um, to me, like if they can build the Jags uh, to be with a big offense, he I think his ceiling is like Dak, like. Dak is capable of moving. So is Trevor. Trevor's really yeah. smart. He's big, so he can see over that line, no problem. Strong guy. He's gonna be hard to take down. And he's like he and he's won. He knows what it takes to win. Right. Uh, he's lost tough games. So like it's it's the kind of thing like he's seen it all and he's had good experiences. So, um, mm-hmm. I, or, the, like for him, I like him. Um, yep. And I still, I don't know. I I think for fantasy, I'd rather have Fields just because I think he'll run more. But like, I know in a couple of years, Trevor Lawrence is gonna be great. Like, I think his ceiling is Dak. I think his floor is like Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins type, like a low RB two mm-hmm. or high, sorry, high RB two, low RB one or QB one. I was gonna say Matt Ryan. So yeah, about the, yeah, about the same. Yeah, <laughs> but but Matt Ryan's also got like multiple weapons there. Of yeah. like he had Julio for a long time and like yeah. Tony Gonzalez for long, like. He really had um, like Austin Hooper, like he's had really good weapons around him to help him get there. Multiple weapons, same with Dak, mm-hmm. multiple weapons. Yep. Um, the reason why I said like a Kurt Cousins, Derek Carr is because they really have a couple, like one guy or two yeah. to rely on and they do the rest of themselves, but they're really, they're capable. Like I don't like saying it, Kurt Cousins. But is when you got Tim guy. Tebow at your tight end position, yeah. you have someone to rely on, am I right? Yeah. He's, I mean, Lawrence You're is relying on the touchdown. <laughs> Lawrence is going to catch some touchdowns this year. I'm telling you, Tebow stays in that team. He, they're, you're going to see some of those like those it's Philly, tricky. Philly plays. I mean, it's, tricky it's trick. going to be some, dirty. Some, some hail marys um, for Tim Tebow. Kind of- Urb, yeah, Urban Meyer's the guy that I worry <laughs> about. Um, being just, just like college coaches coming to the NFL, it worries me. There's a yeah. lot of rookies they're going to be leaning on. Like Chenault is still rookie esque. Now you have yeah. ETN in there. James Robinson. I like him, but like he, I, he was one of my first posts I made on my page where looking at Philip Lindsay, dude was a pro bowler in his first year. Not many rookies do it. And he did, um, but he had the low draft capital so they can afford to sit him and be like, Oh, you're a really good backup. Be, he's essentially going to be like a Gus Edwards is how I see it coming down. Yeah. Um, but like, I like James Robinson. I think he'll get a lot more attention than people think, but I mean, it's, it's kind of like the 49ers running backs that point like it's yeah it's i think a people are spot. fading james robinson too far too fast 100 yeah, because of the, mm-hmm. the etn thing there etn yeah. isn't gonna play the role i think everybody thinks he's going to you can play more people, of a percy harvin you think or no i think he'll still be a running back be but that drastic but i think the reason so something with etn last year people were saying he was saying he was scared to catch the ball he was not comfortable with his hands um, and then he had a really good year last year, but I mean, it was a COVID season. So it was a weird season. Um, but just the fact that he even had that slight bit of doubt, even a year out of his ability to catch the ball. I think what they did in that rookie camp where they want him running all the receiver routes, it's like, Hey, get comfortable. These are the routes really know him in and out. We know you can run. So yeah. learn to catch. Cause he's going to be the ball catching guy. James mm-hmm. Robinson's going to be the run down your throat guy. And ETN will get his running chances. I don't think he's he just a third down guy. 
Um, he's going to get opportunities. It's going to be like a 50, 50 backfield. It's going to be very good. Um, but yeah. I mean, dangerous. Yeah. That's a dangerous one two punch for sure. But, yeah. but ETN is not coming in to be the workhorse over Robinson. Like a lot of people were saying out of the gate. Yeah. So you saw yeah. ETN going really early in dynasty startups. And then Robinson was like ninth, 10th round in it. And it's like, there's no way. I mean, most teams <laughs> don't have a workhorse anyways and they've kind of gotten away with that because they knew they were wearing down their the running back so if you have two really serviceable running backs you're using them to yeah. to save them i mean you save injury you oh, save yeah. wearing down they're fresher later in the season i mean if you have two really serviceable running backs i think you're using them both but yeah, then speaking their defense of is, their defense is still going to be bad so i mean but yeah. they ran like he ran a lot last year anyway yeah. despite them being down but i don't know if that was just eh, we're tanking for trevor so <laughs> probably keep running. Yeah. So it's Probably. hard to know, especially with After a new coach. a certain point, it was. They were yeah, gifting so, the, the the fantasy players. Here you go, guys. Congratulations yeah. for picking up Robinson. We'll we'll get Trevor Lawrence, and you guys can have these points. Yeah, and that's kind of – and, like, Urban Meyer is really the biggest factor for me for that Jags offense because I like DJ Shark. Um, Le, Le Marvin Jones is a super underrated guy. It's just really good to have. He'll – like, I think he's a really good guy for helping you win your leagues because he's so, so cheap. Um, but like you have a new QB in there. Now you have a new head coach. Um, you got a fuddled little running back room. So it's really hard to know how they'll be. Cause like on paper, I'm looking at them, like they have some good pieces. They could be good. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's just the defense will be bad. Urban Myers. I don't know how much of a college kind of run, like kind of game he's going to bring. Cause like we've seen it fizzle out, but we've seen people like Cliff Kingsbury make it work, but it wasn't great his first year either. Right. Yeah. So it was a struggle. Um, yeah, so like there's gonna be some growing pains for that team. Um, but I mean they'll win more games than my Texans, unfortunately. So rookie coach, rookie uh, quarterback all in the same year. Like you said, that is kind of a, a Murray a King Kingsbury kind of situation there. Um of those wide receivers, Johnny they have a lot of what, Kyle? I need to hit that Johnny question in the chat about that's the Jags right. Receiver. That's what I'm getting to here. Yeah, is um, um who's your favorite Jags wide receiver out of all that talent? For me, it's Shark. Okay. Um, only because Shark's had a few years in the league. Um, the guy's capable of getting open. Dude's six four. Like he's a Mike Evans big guy. Um, so I think with how much is new there, you want it's kind of like rookie times or rookie QBs liking a tight end, having a big, safe body, really strong hands. Shark is yeah. that guy. So for me, he's He's got a like a low floor for sure, but I think a lot of those players have a low floor. But for me, he's got a good, a decent. He's got the highest floor of them, just because he's a big body. I think they'll if they can get near the goal line, they'll look for him in high pressure situations. They'll look for him. He's I like I just like him. I like I want to see Shark Week. I want it, I want it to happen. Well, and and, uh, and like you said, if he's the big body out there, and they don't really have tight end presence, yeah, right? So, <laughs> right. So if you don't have that yeah. big body presence, especially down in the red zone, it seems like Chark's kind of that go-to guy right there. And, and red zone looks are so valuable. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I like that. Really, did they, I like, I like a, they added a tight end this year, didn't they? I think. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I heard that they were they were looking at Ertz, but I'm not. I know that hasn't happened yet, but I. Oh, uh, they have Tyler Eifert there. So oh, there's yeah. uh he's a veteran. So there's two games. Yeah. <laughs> has he yeah. played more has he played more than two games in a season since he's no, been? No, that, that was or? the Cincinnati turf. We know that like it happened to oh, like, okay. the jungle was him. gone. Right. That's why it happened to Burrow. <laughs> Zyfert wasn't there to get hurt, so it was Burrow, unfortunately. Yeah. God, dang God. it. They should have kept him just for that. So I guess Yazoma became Eifert too. He went down early, so <laughs> so bad man i don't yeah he can't stay talented guy super talented player can't stay yeah. healthy with eifert but, what a letdown yeah chenault's got the biggest upside for me like guys a big play waiting to happen but it's just yeah. a matter of like he's six two still a big guy um i don't know like i don't i'm not sure if i'm buying I the think... stuff about urban meyer not like and how big dj shark is or playing big i'm like the dude doesn't need to like he's just big like he just needs to be himself be mike evans he'll be productive you'll be fine Sounds like a motivational thing yeah. from a rookie coach is what it sounds like. Yeah. He, Cause that's kind of what you do in college. You kind of talk down on your players a little bit and they kind of respond to it. It's a little bit different in pros, but he's taking that same uh, approach, which I thought was yeah. kind of interesting. And that's how I read into yeah. it is he was trying to motivate him a little bit by calling him out. But 
Uh, that's not a typical thing in the pros that happens, mm -hmm. uh, but you see that happen a lot in college. And so I think that's just the approach he was taking there um, with. So to me, that makes me think that he's also thinking shark is kind of the, the guy there too. So, yeah, I think shark is probably like the safest guy, but uh, Chenault's going to be like your locket. He's going to be your big explosion game waiting to happen. Like, yeah. So, but I'm not comfortable enough starting him in my flex like I am Lockett. Yeah, put Lockett no, in my flex. Uh, yeah, I mean, Chanel it's is hopefully my fourth wide receiver. Well, I mean, you got Russell Wilson throwing to Lockett, and just oh, it's yeah. disgusting. It's yep. watching those two go off. Yeah, because they've got some good chemistry going there. For but, sure. I mean, a couple of years could be that. Like once Lawrence gets comfortable, could be. Yeah, like it very it well won't be, be that year, situation. It could be. Yeah, it could be this year, but I don't think it will be. No. Yeah. Yep, I'm not buying. So, all right, guys. On that note, I think we'll we'll wrap this up. We've been going for a little over an hour. Um, not to say we won't do this again because uh, James, we're stuck with you in what yeah. three dynasty leagues now? All of a sudden, yeah, uh, three for now. Yeah, for now. Who knows <laughs> what comes along planning now? On, planning on doing that uh, auction one a little bit later on too. I think you were going to hop in that one with us, weren't you? Yeah, I'm a big fan. Like I've had to do auction leagues with a bunch of randoms, which. It's fine, but I mean, it's never the same. You always get people that leave mid-season, so it's never really. I've never been in one. It's. Yeah, I've never done one. one. I I really like it. I have my own idea of how to do auction drafts, but I just don't have people I know that. Are Maybe we let you run that one, huh? <laughs> cool. Maybe I'll do that. I'll take advantage of you guys in that one. We'll see how. It oh goes. yeah, you. Yeah, oh, we'll, you mean we'll you have a strategy? Start. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I've never done one. So we'll let you. Yeah, I've never done one, so we'll let you uh, GM that one. If. If and I know if in your league this time, from what I know that. about James, I'm going to guess that uh, from his trading back strategy, it's a it's a wait and don't bid early kind of strategy. Let everyone else uh, oh, yeah. spend all their money and then wait for yeah. for who's left yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. That's, I did that this year, and it did get me a ship in an auction league with random, so it worked out. But uh, it's not my yeah. favorite strategy, but it works. Perfect. It's like put up CMC first, let everybody blow their wads, and then you're just raking in all the Dobbins and Zeeks out there, right? Exactly. Nobody has any <laughs> money left. <laughs> awesome. Well, James, thanks for joining us tonight, man. Uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, boys. And uh, if I ever get mine going, I'll have to have you on it too. <laughs> oh, for sure. That would yeah. be great, actually. Yeah. Totally. All right, guys. Well, that's it for tonight. And uh, I hope your teams really suck, James. <laughs> yep, I hope you lose everything. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to sell Hubbard to Corey now. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. See ya.